Family Theater presents Charlie Ruggles, John Howard, Marjorie Hartford, and Rod O'Connor. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents God in a Red Scooter, starring John Howard, Rod O'Connor, and Marjorie Hartford. To introduce the drama, here is your host, Charlie Ruggles. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our drama, God and a Red Scooter, which stars John Howard as Ed, Marjorie Hartford as Jean, and Rod O'Connor as the narrator. Sleep is beautiful. Sleep is a soft hand smoothing the frowns and frets on the tired faces of men. Sleep is a mother hand rocking the cradle of the world, rocking it softly, rocking men and women and all the little children to sweet silence and peace. That's what sleep is. And do you want to know something? I pity the man who does not know how to sleep. Consider little Eddie. I love children like Eddie. Eddie knows how to sleep. Before he went to bed tonight, he was having a talk all by himself down there in the garden. This is the way he spoke this afternoon as he sat dropping pebbles into a milk bottle. And you know what I said, God? You know what I said to Daddy? I said, God did hear me. That's what I said. And God, remember when I said, please give me a red scooter like Stevie and Tony's got? Remember when I said that about the scooter? Didn't you hear me, God, huh? Didn't you? Look, God, I got lots of pebbles. A whole million. See what I mean? See why I love little children like Eddie? He wanted a red scooter. He went to sleep dreaming of a red scooter. And did he get the scooter? Well, I shall have to tell you the whole story. In the manner of speaking, the story begins with grapes. From this hill, you get a pretty good idea how it looks, Jeannie. The vines are beautiful, Ed. Nice, dark green. Here, let me hold Eddie for you. Well, be careful of his back. He's so wiggly. <laughs> I got him. Is that our land all the way down to the road? Straight clean to Route 99. That's 26 acres of good grape wood, Jeannie. Don't it make you feel kind of glad just to look at it? Ah, uh -huh. It almost makes you want to laugh and cry, Ed. Standing here like this, looking down on our own land. Oh, it's nice to own something. Yeah. Cost me plenty of jack, too. But it's worth it. When will the grapes be growing, Ed? Oh, three years. Takes at least three years. Seems so long to wait. I mean, you'd think they'd just pop out. <laughs> Not grapes, Jeannie. You gotta build up grapes. You gotta work a vineyard. Then after three years, you know what it's gonna be like down there? What? They're gonna be out there on the wire trellises, those grapes. They're gonna be hanging thick and heavy near the redwood stakes. And when the harvest comes, we're gonna be packing in... Well over 200 tons of the best red empress in California. It's, it's almost like a miracle, Ed. Yeah. Eddie will be three years old when we start picking our grapes. Uh-huh. He'll be walking. Yep. Takes time for kids and grapes to grow. These plans, these husband and wife plans, spoken in sunny places, are delightful. Invariably delightful. But I must repeat, I pity the man who does not know how to sleep. Just listen to him. Maybe I made a mistake. It's risky business. It's a gamble putting all your money into grapes. The man is worrying, mind you, at one o'clock in the morning. It could be a shrinkage. Could be a bad market, and then... Well, I, I just can't afford to bump a tough market. Look at him, fidgeting with pencils and papers and doubts. Emperor should sell. Munson said Emperor's was a good grape. But I don't know. Maybe I should have stocked up with muscats or rabies. Well, Norton did all right last year with rabies. All this at one o'clock in the morning, when he should be asleep with his wife and babies. <laughs> Do 
You'd think the gentleman might allow himself the gentle privilege of getting tired. At least by one o'clock in the morning, you'd think he might yawn and go to bed. Why doesn't he stop fretting? Why doesn't he relax, poor fellow? I pity the man who does not know how to sleep. You're not getting enough rest, Ed. Now, don't start fussing again, Jean. Well, you know what the doctor said. All this worrying will well, only worrying make happens us... to be part of a great deal. Besides, a fellow's got a right to get excited over his first harvest. We're picking in three weeks. But you're losing weight. And, Eddie, grapes aren't everything. Not if you're going to keep losing your health and everything. That's what's worrying you? Yes. Well, look, Jeannie, I'm trying to figure this out. Maybe 15, 20 years from now, well, we'll want to take it easy. We'll want a better house than this. And the kids, well, they got to get an education. College. Every kid we have goes to college. And then maybe someday, you and me, we'll take a trip, Jeannie. All the way to Holland, maybe. You always said you'd like to see kids in wooden shoes. Oh, it's so nice to hear you talk like that, Ed. All right, that's the picture. Now, do you know what's painting that picture? What? Grapes. See those grapes out there tonight? I put four years into them, and every cent we own is in those grapes. And right now, this minute, I figure we got over 230 tons on those vines. Well, they'll be ready for the lug boxes in three weeks. Now, if anything goes wrong with those grapes, Jeannie... Well, it's going to put an awful big dent in things. Nothing's going to go wrong with the grapes, Ed. Well, a lot of things can go wrong with them. The trouble with you, Ed, is you haven't got enough faith in God. Now, don't go into that again. Well, maybe if you'd get down on your knees once in a while. Instead Listen, of... Listen, Jeannie. Will you do the praying and let me look after the grapes? Will you? Well, that's the way it is with some people. Their heads are forever spinning plans and projects. You'd think Edward might have a little more confidence in me. You'd think he'd stop worrying for the space of a quiet sleep and let me look after the grapes. For I do have a way with grapes, with vines and branches. Understand me, I'm not against plans and projects. I find no fault with the sweat on a man's brow, for labor is a magnificent and courageous thing. I'm talking rather about something that is more courageous than labor. I'm talking about relaxation, about confidence, about trust and faith in me. I like the man who sleeps. I love the man who relaxes and who, like a child, rests easily in the arms of my providence. Not so with Edward. Edward is too full of plans, as if the plans of men were merely the plans of men. Listen to him. Sure, I'm ready to start, Campbell. My grapes can't wait. Where are those pickers you promised me? We're coming up the valley fast as we can, Ed. Now, don't blow your top, man. You got enough pickers for me? All you need, just give me time. Well, how soon do you figure to make it? Oh, we'll be cutting your vines by the 17th. I'll guarantee that. Okay. Only make it fast. Fast as I can. <laughs> Now, I like vineyards, vineyards and the fruit of the vine, thick clustered grapes, all bursting black and purple in the harvest time. These are among some of the lovelier aspects of my creation. I bear no grudges against vineyards, having regard for the littlest grape. But once in a while, by design, clouds will gather for reasons sufficient to the ultimate purpose of things. I gather a breeze at Burbank and scoop a cool breath off the high Sierras. Northeasterly, my gales go playing with canyon dust in the sea sands at San Diego. And quite suddenly, quite perceptibly, there's mist in the Midlands and in the Valley of San Gabriel. And out around the mountains and down from the mountains, down around the flatlands of San Fernando. Nor is it any surprise that there is mist also in the eyes of a woman in Fresno. It won't rain, Ed. Don't keep staring like that out of the window. You heard what it said on the radio. But that's just mist, Ed. You know how it is with mist. They come and go. It'll be dry tomorrow. The grapes will be dry. Wait and see. Listen. It's, it's only a little flurry of rain, Ed. Listen. God won't spoil everything by letting it rain now, Ed. I know he won't. Oh, God, don't let it rain. Yeah. 
God won't let it rain. Oh, Eddie, don't let it hurt you. Three days. Three days to harvest. And look at it tonight. You work for years. Prune, cultivate. You put every red cent you own into grapes. And what do you get? Wash out. Man ain't supposed to cry. Yeah. Man ain't supposed to cry. Believe me, I hold no grudges against vineyards. I like vineyards. But more than all the vineyards in the world, I like man. I love man. I know man well, yet never do I cease to wonder at him. He's capable of so much, of kindness, of charity, and of sacrifice. And yet so often he's incapable of hope. All things you can ask of him at times save this, a little faith, a little confidence. It was so with you, Edward. It was so with you those nights. But Tony and Steve's got scooters, Mom. Yes, I know, Eddie. But you don't want a scooter. I want a red one. Maybe on your next birthday you'll get one. But, but Tony and Stevie's got scooters. Oh, now, no baby stuff. You're a big man now. You just pray to God and next year he'll send you a scooter. God, send me a scooter tomorrow like Stevie's got. A red one. I don't want to wait till next year, God. Hurry up and send me a scooter. Did he hear me, Mom? Hello, Ed. Daddy, did God hear me? What are you talking about, Eddie? I asked God to send me a scooter. Did he hear me on account of it's my birthday tomorrow? I wouldn't know, Eddie. I wouldn't know too much about that. It's a red one. Tired, Ed. Maybe God left it in the yard already. Have you been giving him ideas about birthday presents? He's been asking for that scooter for over a year, Ed. You know that. Well, tell him to stop asking. <laughs> Ed, you've changed so much lately. Sure. I know enough now not to go around asking God for scooters. Maybe I should ask him for a rebate on 26 acres of slipskins. Supper's ready. I saw Campbell today. We're ready to pick in a week. My second harvest. It'll be a good harvest, Ed. Maybe. But I'm not counting grapes till I get them off of the vine. I'm only banking on red emperors, Jeannie. Not red scooters. What are you so jittery about, Ed? Heck, man, you're gonna do all right. You got a nice crop out there. I had a nice crop last year, too, Kim. Oh, forget last year. From the look of them vines, Ed, I'm guaranteeing you'll be cutting 300 lugs a day. Okay. I'll be seeing you tomorrow, Kim. Right. Oh, Ed. Yeah? Uh, this is between you and me. Yeah? But have you been noticing your wife lately? Jeannie? Yeah. That kid looks plenty tired out. She's worrying about a lot of things. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Jeannie. You know how women are, Campbell. I She's don't know, straight. Ed, but... But if I was you, I... Listen, I'd... Campbell, I understand, Jeannie. All I needed need is one good harvest, and then, well, maybe we'll do a little celebrating. That'll fix her up. Yeah, I suppose. Well, here's to a good harvest. <laughs> Look at those grapes piling up, Campbell. Those are big lug. Yeah, swell crop. I'm going back home and pick up Jeannie and the kids. I'm going to set them up there on that hill and let them look at a real harvest. That's worth looking at, ain't it, Campbell? You bet. Jeannie. Oh, Jeannie, I got a surprise for you and the kids. Hmm. I wonder if she's lying down again. <laughs> I knew I'd find you in here, lazy bones. Jeannie, I want to take you and... What's the matter, Jeannie? Tired, Ed. Well, you don't look good. You don't look good at all. Maybe I better get Doc Hanley for you. Wait a minute, Ed. It's funny. Sometimes I, I've always had a feeling I'd be lying here like this, talking here like this, telling you sooner or later that. What are you talking about? Ed, I'll be leaving you for a while. Now, look here. You'll just run down. Why, Doc Hanley will fix you up in a jiffy. Come here, Ed. Sit down on the bed. Now, look at me. Do I look scared? No. You don't look scared, but you look... All right. Now listen to me. The sheets are in the closet downstairs. The kids' laundry, well, you'd better send it out every week. Mrs. Abel... What are you oh. talking about, Jeannie? Ed, maybe you better start praying for me. Jeannie. Oh, don't leave me alone, Ed. Don't ever leave me alone. Just keep praying for me. And... 
And maybe we'll still take that trip someday, you and me. Sure, honey. Ed will go first class, huh? All the way to Holland and see the tulips and the kids with the wooden shoes. What about it, Doc? Far as I know, and remember, I'm only one doctor. There's nothing much that can be done for Jeannie, Ed. All right. I'll get it. I'll get the best specialist in this country if I have to. Go right ahead. Uh, by the way, you can go in and see her now. She's conscious again. Well, thanks, Doc. Hello. Jeannie Kid. Hello, Ed. You're looking pretty good, Jeannie. Your face is... You're still beautiful, honey. How are the kids? Oh, good. Listen, Jeannie, I was just talking to Doc Hanley and... I know, Ed. It's all right. Listen, I'm going to get you the best specialist in the country. Ed. Yeah? I asked you to do something for me once. Remember? Okay, Jeannie. You asked me to pray. Look, I'll get down on my knees right now. Do you really want me to start praying? Not that way, Ed. All right. Now, look. If I have to kidnap a half dozen of the best doctors, I'll do it. You're going to get better, Jeannie. You hear me, honey? You're going to get better. Why, you'll be out of here before you know it. Excuse me for barging in like this, Doctor. What did you find? We're doing everything possible, sir. You'll have to be patient. Yeah. That's what everybody says. Be patient. Why don't you go home and rest? Get a little sleep. Sleep? Not now. I can't sleep now. Are you listening, God? I don't know the words you're supposed to use, but, but it's from the bottom of my heart. I'm praying for Jeannie, my wife. I, I can't lose her, God. Not now. We got kids, God. We got three kids, and we're trying to make a go of it with grapes. You gotta hear me, God. You gotta make Jeannie well. Please, God. Please. I, I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart. What's our chances now, Doc? Sorry, I think you'd better be prepared for the worst. You mean, you mean there's no chance? She's getting weaker. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see. I understand. Okay, Doc. What's the matter, Daddy? Nothing. Mom's sick, huh? Yeah. Why didn't he ask God to send Mom home, huh? Want me to ask God for you, huh, Daddy? Well, maybe, maybe God's got cotton in his ears, Eddie. Cotton? Yeah. You can't hear so good with cotton in your ears. He can hear me. That's so? Yep. Well, once he didn't hear you, Eddie. When? Remember when you asked him for that scooter? Yeah, a red scooter. Well, God didn't hear your prayers then, Eddie. Yes, he did. God did hear my prayers. Hey. Come over here. Up my knee. Now, what did you say? I said God did hear my prayers. That's so. What did he say to you? God said, he said no. Sometimes God says no, huh, Daddy? Yeah. What's the matter, Daddy? What's the matter, huh? Hello? Uh, is this the residence? Yes, of... yes, Doc. What's the news? Well, we wanted to let you know that... Doc! Doctor! Operator, I've been cut off. Operator, get me mercy, hosp... Why, the line's dead. You go out and stay in the garden with the kids, Ed. I gotta go to Mom. I asked you to do something for me once. Remember? God Almighty, I, I don't know... I don't know how to pray to you. I tried, Jean. So help me, I tried. 
You can't die, Jeannie. Not alone. Not up there in that room alone. You can't die on me, Jeannie. Sometimes God says no, huh, Daddy? All right. All right, God. You got me where you want me. Listen to me. Please, you gotta listen now. Sure, I want it, Jeannie. When you love somebody, you, you don't want to see them die. You, you want to have them. God, do you want to have them close enough to put your arms around them? Okay, maybe I did want it. Maybe I did want you to say yes. Just like I wanted you to say yes to that first harvest. Sometimes God says no, huh, Daddy? All right. Sometimes you say no, too. If that's the way it's going to be, well, all right, you're the boss. I'm admitting it, you're the boss. Only listen to me now. I don't want Jeannie to die all alone without me. You hear me, God? I can take it. I can take anything. Only don't let it be all alone for Jeannie. I'm asking you, God. Honest to God, I'm asking you. Jeannie! Hello, Eddie. Well, you're, you're not... What's the trouble, Ed? Well, you're smiling at me, Jeannie. You're, you're looking at me. You're talking to me. I'm really feeling much better today. Come and put your arms around me. And stop looking like a baby. Oh, Jeannie. Maybe... Maybe God is saying yes, Jeannie. Maybe he's saying yes. The night tonight is beautiful over California. For the first time in a long time, a tired man sleeps. Resting at last in the shadow of my hand, he sleeps. I might have said no. I have said no to some of my loveliest children, my best beloved. But know this always, Edward. There are times when my refusals are necessary to a plan you cannot understand. The little Eddie, being wiser in his innocence, seems to understand. That storm upon your vineyard, that storm that brought your curse, was a blessing to a thousand other Edwards and past your lands parched by the drought 600 miles to the north. So tragedy, the tragedy of today, is but the pruning and the preparation of a lovelier tomorrow. Yes, there are times I've said no. As many fathers have said no to their dearest, their best beloved children. But tonight, tonight, Edward, I've said yes. Oh, night, rest lightly on the tired eyes of the man. And concerning Eddie, five years old, listen to him mixing his prayers tonight. Our Father, who art in heaven, the Lord's with thee, and blessed is the fruit, and, and give us this day our daily bread, and ever, and ever, amen. And send me a scooter like Stevie's got. I tell you, I've seen all the beauties of my creation. But there's nothing so beautiful as the small face of a child, the small lips of a child fumbling with prayer, getting it mixed up, getting it tangled and sweetly muddled with sleep. Listen to it. A red scooter, oh God. And all the while the soft fingers of sleep are smoothing his eyelids, closing them easily. A red, a red scooter. Oh, God. All right, Eddie. It'll be a red scooter. I've willed it, Eddie. A red scooter. Now, sleep, Eddie. Sleep. This is Charlie Ruggles again. Once there was a farmer, and it happened that half of his land was very good for farming, while the other half gave him no yield at all because it was on a mountainside. And this was a great cause of worry to the farmer. So one night he got down on his knees and he prayed very hard. He prayed that God would flatten the mountain and make it a nice green pasture so that he might use all his land for planting. When the daylight came and the farmer looked out of his window, 
the mountain was gone, and before his eyes were acres and acres of green meadow. God had given him exactly what he had asked for, and for a time he was delighted. But when the fall came and brought its winds, the mountain which had served as a windbreak was gone, and the farmer's barn was blown down. And when winter came, the rain caused his grain to mildew because he no longer had a barn in which to store it. In the spring, he had nothing to plant because the rain had caused even his seed grain to spoil. When summer came, there wasn't any drinking water because there were no more melting mountain snows to feed the rivers, and so the rivers had gone dry. Now you see how much better off the farmer would have been if God had said no to his prayer. We are like the farmer in some ways. We sometimes pray for the wrong things too. And when we do, thanks be to God, we generally get a no answer. But there are intentions for which we may all pray that are right. And one of them is world peace, unity in the family of nations. If the families of the world would ask God, all of them, for that, which would be for the eventual good of all mankind, then he could not help but say yes. It's a good intention toward which to work. And when you do, pray together as a family, and you'll be accomplishing something else too. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you John Howard, Marjorie Hartford, and Rod O'Connor in God and a Red Scooter. Charlie Ruggles was your host. Others in our cast were David Duvall, Cliff Clark, Stan Waxman, and Baden Powell. The script was written by Timothy Mulvey with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present William Bendix, Harold Perry, and Nancy Gates in The Fable of the Perfect Princess. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.